herzlich willkommen zur 25. Ausgabe von Africa Live. Uh, warm welcome to the 25th edition of Africa Live and the screening of Afrique La Pensée en Mouvement Part 1. There is a Part 2, but it is not in the program. It might be added to the next festival issue in the 26th edition. <laughs> Um, I'm very pleased to uh, give a short introduction to the work of Jean-Pierre Bicolo, who is with us tonight and who is going to stay with us the next few days in the festival uh, Africa Live here in Frankfurt. Um, I try to be super short uh, just to give a few hints of what his work is about as a filmmaker, cutter, writer, as a scholar and in and about cinema as a means actually a, a complex set of tools to become aware and create public space. So what is really at stake is the notion of public space and the questioning of what public space really is in terms of negotiation. Um, 25 years ago, <coughs> the festival Africa Live has been funded by people, non-institutional cultural workers. Uh, among them were uh, Julian Name, the film museum director, or the, the cinema director, Kitty Finke, Esther Baron, Mwepu Mwamba, Maria Nemet. All this happened in 1994, uh, 25 years ago. And a few of these people were also among others. And a lot of uh, people that are here in the room were part of this founding group. I mention this um, because these 25 years and the matters that it is quite a unique setting that in Germany, a group of people living in the city uh, of this kind of partially African, partially diasporic, uh, partially from minoritarian contexts, all these people gathered and created a network uh, to collaborate and to create this festival. So these 25 years are in their own history quite something valuable and to remember of. So thank you for that. Um, I think that it also makes sense why, in such a context, Jean-Pierre Bécolo has a kind of a retrospective of his work now. Um, 25 years of Africa Alive, his work started almost 30 years ago. He started to write his first film, Cartier Mozart, in 1988 in New York, if I'm right, and developed this first story uh, to become part of a body of work of 11 films all together, um, and we're going to see eight of these films. Um, I myself, my name is Marie-Hélène Uh Cartier Mozart and the film by his uh, compatriot uh, Jean-Pierre, um, uh, ah, Jean-Marie Tenot, I'm sorry. Uh, these two filmmakers with their two films, Cartier Mozart and Afrique de Je te plumerai, were somehow uh, the starting point uh, to collaborate, uh, to work on African cinema, but also to think of an acute urgency to connect research, uh, scholarship, um, teaching, and curating in such a perspective. So thank you as well for this. My own career, if you will, on African cinema started also 25 years ago. <laughs> um, in, um, in your contribution to the anthology on the cinema of Medhondo, which uh, follows the festival in Berlin in 2017, I was part of the organizing team of the curation together with Brigitta Costa and Enuka Ayemba. You said something that I really liked very much. It's about, on n'a pas envie de sortir notre cinéma de la vie. Uh, we don't want to keep our, our you, uh, we don't want to keep us out of our cinema. So there is not just my cinema for myself and your cinema for yourself, but something like a more general type of a cinema that is part of a negotiation of a part of life for us all. So it's not just only entertainment or militant cinema or the one or the other, but more something that you define in another text where you say, Jean-Pierre, I love defining cinema as an image of radiology, a scanner, I must show, I must enable us 
it must enable us to see, to diagnose the disease. It is not the radiologist who prescribes the treatment, he just makes the images. So once it has shown the society would be able, would be find the remedies itself. So cinema is about finding out what the disease really is in terms of that scanner and not to say what kind of solution it is. So again, you remind us about that space that cinema is to to open that kind of negotiation, uh, to debunk, to deconstruct uh, narrative structures, power relations, all of that. Uh, 2017 were a very productive uh, year in your work. You um, somehow, you premiered three of your films in 2017, Afrique la pensée en mouvement, Miraculous Weapons, which is going to be screened uh, later on tonight, and uh, the film uh, or the, the TV series, the um, pilot, Our Wishes, also uh, released in 2017. Uh, and somehow I thought uh, that there are like slices of the same meal or layers uh, to the same complex. Uh, in 2016, in Dakar was held the first Atelier de la Pensée, the first workshop of thinking, if you will, organized by Felvin Sar economist, theoretician and musician, and Achille Mbembe, philosopher uh, and critique, uh, most renowned people today in terms of the, re uh, in regards to the topics of decolonization, of reappropriation, uh, restitution, and also in the question of the combination of decolonization and care. How, how can we decolonize and how Uh, what do we need to care about that space that becomes empty when you decolonize? So um, there is a lot of, um, say, debate that resonates in the film itself, that resonates in your own work as well. And I won't go into details into that besides saying when um, Bembe says it's about a pensée planétaire, there is a planetary thought. So there is something that is that we need to engage in terms of the whole world and not being too locally connected while looking very closely at specific problems. So these things are connected and to the film and to yourself. And um, I would like to invite you to say a few words before the screening and later on we'll only have like... Um, 45 minutes uh, for a discussion or 30 minutes for a discussion after the film and the discussion will be in English. But uh, Natasha proposed if there is the need to have a short translation, she'll find out a solution for that. Jean-Pierre, thank you. Okay, good evening, thank you, Marie-Hélène. Uh, it's actually very interesting that you were the one introducing this film here because this film uh, was commissioned kind of to me by Felwinsa after he watched the other film you introduced at Berlinale mm -hmm. uh, on Mudimbe. Yes. Les choses et les mots de Mudimbe. Um, and the reason is um, uh, that it's very challenging to make a film about people thinking or just talking. So, you, you know, with cinema in general, when people don't understand, they think the filmmaker is the one who's not good. But with books, when you don't understand, you think you are the one who's stupid. So, the challenge is how do you make a film where uh, that can still be considered cinema and uh, where you kind of, as a filmmaker, because people in the film are smart for sure, But you, as a filmmaker, you don't look dumb. So uh, that was really the exercise. How can, that's why the film is called Afrique la pensée en mouvement. How do you put thoughts in motion, many motion pictures? Uh, actually, we play with the idea of motion pictures, or it should be motion, motion thinking, mm -hmm. you know, more than the pictures, because the pictures are moving. But how do you make a film to trigger, to make us, to put us in motion? So it's an attempt for sure. So I hope you kind of survive. So I'll be there at the end. Thank you. Thank you.
Jean-Pierre, thank you very much for this uh, incredible film. It, it is a film. It, it's not just only talking heads put together. Um, just as a, and I think we are all overwhelmed by this um, in terms of an experience. We've been here in that space uh, to. Doch, das ist an. Okay, ich sollte das. Okay. Um, we've all been in this space uh, as a three dimensional space, actually hearing to the philosophers and thinkers uh, and being part in, or being invited to, to stay in this space. Um, so my first question is very simple and, and small. It's about how did you conceive to organize uh, something that is spatial into a string, into a chronology. Um, you concentrated uh, aspects and discourses, you put black images in between so we have the time to digest shortly and you created a rhythm around this. So maybe just as a, as a helping question for us to concentrate again who we are. Okay, thank you. Um, um, Okay, I mentioned it earlier, is that uh, I had to deal with that kind of material with the previous film, uh, with Mudimbe, that is a four hour long film, and we shot for like 10 days that film, so he was mainly talking actually, even if it's in his house. In this case, um, I didn't shoot that material, it was given to me, um, and uh, with the first thing, uh, was to kind of just know what it's all about uh, and writing down because it's very important to to have like a tangible text really of what is being said. So the first thing I watched the whole thing and writing. Um, and then um, the next step was actually to 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 try to because um, this is not the order, and this is not, um, most of them didn't speak to each other that way. But I had to make pairs, really. I had to pair them. Uh, those I felt were actually complementary or, or talking about the same thing. I felt that, you know, um, so like Mamadou Diouf and uh, Bashir Ndiaye was into the universalism and, and the Senghor. And the, so I felt, that, okay, I'll put them together. Uh, and put them in dialogue, really, even if the dialogue is not obvious, but still, it was the idea that creating a little conversation on this universalist, universalist idea. Uh, yeah, sorry. Which, which is like a conversation that wasn't really happening in the workshop, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you absolutely. invented somehow the idea of a conversation to create anti uh, entry points for us to be able to cope with this kind of material um, or understand. Not just, yeah, sure, for the entry point, but also because what is very important, I mean, obviously I'm talking about um, being an editor of this, it's what is happening in our brain as we listen to all this, really. And I think that was, for me, the most important thing. So uh, people are talking and you are thinking at the same time, uh, you understand everything or not everything, but still, you know, there is kind of response, even if it's silent, about all this material and all these ideas. So um, uh, it was important not to distract people too much you know, sometimes to even repeat a little bit, like I, I would take like one or two ideas that was actually mentioned and bring it back. Um, uh, I was feeling it was more how do you um, digest really some of this material. Uh, and um, uh, uh, now the graphics was also because I think the eye gets tired just to see the same thing, I had to create three type of graphics, the black and white camera kind of view, then the editing suite kind of graphics, and then just uh, the, the normal footage. Uh, anyway. A mm -hmm. moment before you speak about the graphic, about the dialogue, I wanted to tell to say that it works very well. Huh? Thank you. It works very well, and you made it really sensitive in the way how uh, the women come in and have the space 
And I am really thankful that you came late with your graphic change by the women and let us the time to be just by them without snick snack, without nothing, which was really, really good. Uh, very respectful. Because the problem of this graphic is that it is somehow an optical play. We understand it, it works fine. But it was very good that by the women, when they talk very interesting stuff, we have really time just to be with them. And, and which is by this material, which is not used, but those who organize, Felvin and, and uh, is, you know, the equality, there is no racism in this encounter. Uh, you know, in the decolonization discussion in Europe, in Berlin, they, and I think also in France sometimes, they are very hysterical, very counter-racistic. Only black has the right to do something in Africa and say about Africa something. And here we feel very much decolonization. It's about thought, knowledge, a lot of stuff, but not about racism. And white women, black women would speak on the same level. And this is, you, you could, the way how you made the film also show it stronger. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, should I say something or? Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, I would say um, it's, it, the rule was really that it should come from the material. I didn't shoot the material. So I had to kind of feel the material and really see and also kind of um, the risk is always that um, you try to take over as a filmmaker because obviously we are not as smart as people talking, <laughs> you know, and we, we tend to because of the sake of filmmaking, bring some rhythm dynamic. But the danger is always not to give the space to the people who kind of wrote very serious things and are really about to tell us something. We, you have one hour and a half to do this. So you have to be very how attentive. Hmm? Out, out of how much hours, how many hours did you have all together? 40, something like this, maybe? Uh, you mean the material, like, like six hours or something? I don't know, I don't know, something like seven hours of material. So, or even more, I think. Uh, so they had three days, yes. actually, mm, three days fully. You know. So, uh, so the idea is how do you listen to material, watch material, and make sure that you don't, even, even when you interfere, they should, it shouldn't be felt too much. Uh, that now you're interfering because we cut at the end of the day, you cut, you know, but it shouldn't really be, uh, it, it should al almost be at the same rhythm as people when themselves are kind of fed up with like, you know, that's where you cut, not when you feel like cutting and then people will feel more you're cutting of the discourse. Uh, so that's kind of something like this. And putting it also in conversation, uh, was also a way to uh, uh, to kind of keep stimulating uh, our, our thoughts. Um, if you talk about the woman, for example, uh, Nadia Yala, she didn't speak at the same time as Leonora Miano, for example. And Nadia is a philosopher and Leonora is a writer. Um, um, uh, but you put mm -hmm. them together in a way that um, makes them breathe themselves in the space that we can see them, and at the same time, and I, uh, I'm, I'm sensing um, like something like a utopian moment of that gathering in the way you concentrate it, that um, that breath that everyone has to like speak up. Uh, is kept and it's not just the argument that counts what the person is saying but the how and like the little pause and then you give us as well a little pause to um, 
to check out uh, what was this and then you continue but it's always like like a musical thing it's like uh, you have like syncopes or um, a kind of uh, now we have like uh, two bars no sound and then it continues but it's still in that same type of rhythm and it 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 felt feels utopian uh, because there is an equality of all these elements being together in the same way so you don't have okay maybe it starts too much with men but uh but besides that i mean it's I like i was expecting that because that actually does <laughs> the first time uh, okay i would say uh no, it's true it's true that rhythm rhythm is very important in uh, editing film obviously these days we don't talk about it um i think it's godard who says that um editing uh, is like a heartbeat so so obviously you it comes from the material really you cannot come from outside and try to impose it on the material so you feel the material and you start playing with it and here it's ideas also it's not it's the people the lights the camera but ideas also uh, 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 so i would say um now to explain why I started with the man longer, it's 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 uh, uh, the structure is like okay they were more like universalist kind of, you know, and I felt like you know, uh, not really, you know, but but the the universalist question of you know uh, was actually Mamadou Diouf and uh, and Bashir Ndiaye, and um, uh, I would say uh, what was actually interesting between Leonora and Nadia. It was mainly that she, um, no, no, Leonora, you know, Leonora is more poetic as a writer when she talks about the name of Africa. So, and then uh, um, um, and Nadia is very philosophical and very fast and very smart, you know. So obviously I was thinking that both would kind of complement uh, uh, very well uh, because Nadia alone, you will go crazy. So, um, uh, Leonora alone also might be too, you know. So I felt that, you know, those two like together will, will be interesting. Mm. So, um, like yeah. the thought of, of uh, contrapunct of, um, yeah. yeah, of two voices uh, at, at the same time and um, uh, of complementary and not of, um, uh, of chronology, actually, no? Mm -hmm that comes into play. Then, I mean, each one has a different logic, but it was based on what I had. You know, like um, uh, Severine Kodjo Granvo, she uh, talk about the shame, talk about something very, and then um, uh, Abdurrahman Sek uh, also was kind of on the same mode. But then there was, um, uh, what is her name? Um, Huria, uh, I think Huria Ben, uh, uh, she was also, to show, uh, I don't know if in this film now, I'm confused, but talk about uh, the Malcolm X, is it Malcolm X story and all that? Is it in this film? I'm sorry. It's in the second part. So anyway, because we have two parts, you know. Um, so the idea is that uh, when I catch kind of a, a theme that needs to be developed more, uh, I, I, I even include Francoise Vergès' question, you know, on the shame. Uh, so just obviously that one was built around this whole idea of the, the, the personal kind of destruction, psych, personal psychology around all these things. So yeah, it's clearly that you organize based on what you receive as material, you know, not from a kind of external idea of structuring it in a, a head before you even start. Mm -hmm. There is uh, something else that I that I find really striking with this film, is um, is the idea that it it is somehow a library and um, it, it's definitely a container of ideas and it's far too much to really digest entirely. So there is the website, you can go and watch it again, you can find all kinds of materials, you can look up the names properly, uh, get your own also. reading, etc, etc. So it's like really a teaser actually for an archive of, of thoughts. Um, uh, 
but not in the um i th i don't think it was it was supposed to be automatically in archive it it happens to be like this afterwards because we were not there but we still have the feeling that we were there actually so the film uh becomes um a chance to be somewhere and that's also an utopian moment of cinema you can be somewhere without being physically there but you can catch up with something that happens and be connected with it um and i wanted to know i know that you are working a lot around this idea of cinema qui soigne uh, the idea that cinema cares of and continues that care if this dimension is related to this as well like you keep something so that it's in the world and then it can continue and progress um does this fit does this work with your concept of cinema of care in a way <clears throat> i would say um okay you can imagine that say i'm so many conferences all over the world every day and people talking and all all kind of stuff in different so if we had to do to make films like this on all the conferences that are happening on a, every day in all over obviously the whole genre will be start we start a new genre really <laughs> um it's, in, instead of doing what they call captation where they just bring camera and they just switch one person after another so basically the challenge is always uh about The, the genre it's like they are abandoned genres you know like uh, weddings you know they film everyday weddings but i always feel that if we reinvent the wedding genre or video uh, you know by, by really bringing cinema into it you know uh, so i think it would be very interesting really all these um, images that are uh, I, i like tend to compare it with text right? obviously every text is not literature you know every image is not cinema you know because you can be talk about cinema but, uh, images but are we talk about cinema so i think um I'm, i i like this abandoned genre also to try something with them because it's just like oh just a video and then people talking and then. so <clears throat> now uh, one of the main element uh, if you mention this concept of that we don't use cinema really properly or we cinema has been hijacked let's say by the business because the real reason why films are being made these days it's mainly to make money so we can we can't be hypocritical about it from the very first guru who teaches you how to write a script you know, american for sure you know uh, i like this book of one of them saying how to write a screenplay that sells in 21 days <laughs> so you can see the project mm -hmm. the, the other gurus that are like popular but obviously they, they might not talk about money right away but it's all about looking for recipes you know uh, the recipe in the script that really will make it work but work to make money really that's what it means because if your film is not commercially successful it didn't work so that's a kind of funny logic like uh, if you know it's like in life all the good people end up being rewarded and the best end up being at the top so that's kind of what it says that um so um script so if we um uh, we look at how scripts are structured stories are structured fiction uh, fiction or it's all to make people excited you know uh, uh, so that they will be excited and they will like f have a feeling of enjoying the film but it stops there because it's for money it's not, uh, nobody in, um, uh, producing films or very few like i still hope that some exist are caring about us as the audience if if we're going to sleep well or if we <laughs> going to feel better they don't care they actually just trying to make you like something and spend your money and then they be rich okay so um uh, one of the thing with the script and film in general is that we know few things you know we know that we kind of it's something interesting we we know that it's a medium to for knowledge for things actually that could be very good for us as human beings um and i like the the story of uh, now you talk about the the healing boris cyrilnik who's one of the what is it psychiatrist or ethologist i know but from like psychiatrics 
he's telling the story of him being a child of the war and he's saying how he was saved by the Superman movie traumatized and then he was able to through Superman to kind of go over his trauma uh, which uh, he called he called actually that uh, the rehabilitating hero you know and he kind of concludes the story saying everybody who lived the trauma uh, 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 kind of needs a re re rehabilitating hero sort of so why children like uh, all the action heroes because they are very small and they're weak in front in a world of big people and strong so these superman's batman character are a way for them to kind of overcome their weakness at least mentally you know and all that. so so by saying this but it certainly clearly says that cinema obviously has a kind of impact on uh, traumatized beings you know people you know in general and now we us as cinema as filmmakers obviously it's not our project to try to treat whoever had traumas uh, we just use certain cinema tricks just to kind of make money so i i think what is very important with a, like a film like this it was because there are so many ideas but in the editing, in the rhythm, we kind of try to, I say try because obviously uh, yeah, it's not really perfectly done, but we try to be with the people where they are. Obviously there are so many ideas, it's very complicated to do it on, on a film like this, but still the principle of us watching this and making it digestible, I mean, how you define it. So it's, I was actually the kind of idea, that's the main link I will see with that. There's, there's another link that I see. Instead of having a series of talking heads, everyone is having his lecture or her lecture, and you can like click on each one and watch or listen to that person, you create these conversations and these links between them. And that's something I think is major, that you... Um, it seems to be an interest in, in your work to find collaborations, to find ways uh, where things are linked together. And it's not you in your head or me in my head, but there is something that we exchange at some, at some stage and where this thing, what happens in that room, matters. And it doesn't belong to me or to you anymore. It's something that we share. And that moment of share is a cinematic experience that we, we, we've shared this thing with you now. So, um, and there's something about to be possessive about the world. And um, that's maybe some kind of an alternative to this. Instead of owning it, it becomes something that we share, um, but not like a la la version of uh, everything is nice and cool, but um, how we deal with what is at stake and that we need each other to understand what is happening properly, you know? So, uh, collaborations. So, you meeting Felvin Sar and Ashil Mbembe, that matters suddenly that you are engaged with these people and not being a philosopher actually, but you you come into that and you become part of their conversation as well. Uh, that's yeah, it was actually, incredible. Yeah, uh, their project is designed to be open and shared, really. That's how it is. I think they designed this Atelier La Pensée. I mean, they, I mean, I think they were like many people. They were like, um, I don't know, 40, 50, I don't know how many, um, because all of them are not in this film. Some are in the other one, some are in nothing really, but still. Um, and also the what Felwin told me when we met, obviously he said, we wish we could include cinema in this whole discussion, because obviously it's about thinking. Uh, so cinema shouldn't be excluded. Um, but, and very clearly, yes, I mean, I felt that uh, we need a lot of in African cinema also, even maybe more than them, because uh, cinema is not about thinking, you know. So um, we, we we need the same, we have the same problems, the same questions, the same ideas. So it's very clear that we are, uh, let's say, uh, uh, very welcome to, for, I mean, uh, in, in this group,
What I would say was very interesting uh, was when we screened the film in Dakar during the second atelier, because obviously and I had to go there to show the film to uh, the group that, with different people. But uh, so what was very interesting was the um, how now cinema could come in their world because themselves, I don't think they had a clear idea of what cinema could do in what they had done, really. Um, it was just filming, you know, like uh, just film and then you show what it is. So I think at the end, and the discussion was very long also uh, with them, because it, it could now, they had a very clear sense of what cinema could do, you know, and in whatever they were doing. And, um, and for me also, it was very clear that we could, uh, actually we should even uh, be more in a, because African cinema, I mean, I'm sorry, but it's like we have three kind of dimension uh, and we've been, no, not three, maybe four, maybe five. So, but <laughs> but we, we have been struggling with few, few, few of them. The NGO genre, let's say, you know, okay. And obviously, the, 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 you take any NGO mission, you have always films about this, you know, mm, which is not a problem per se, you know, but it's always like, uh, but is is people making those films, making sure that cinema is involved in it, you know, because every image is not cinema, every text is not literature. So, NGOs. Then you also have, now it stopped a little bit, but it was for a long time, the traditional question, tradition versus modernism. You have a whole category of films on these questions. And I remember this Burkinabe uh, professor saying, she said, we know what Africa is suffering from. It's not from its traditions. You know, uh, today, this afternoon, we talk about the resources. We know exactly what are the problems of Africa, but traditions is not the main problem of Africa. So, but a lot of themes around these themes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know what the third genre, the third genre but very clearly, I would say that, um, uh, and that was one of my big debate with uh, uh, Olivier Barlet, who is one of the African film critic. It's like why never African culture? Why never you go to universities when you go to when you try to create African critiques of cinema? You almost take street kids to become critics, but can you do that in Paris? Like you take somebody like from almost the street, because that's what is happening, and try to turn him into a crit film critic. But you never go to universities, why? So the question is this, cinema has kind of, man African cinema you know, has managed a kind of space, you know? That is not where the knowledge is kind of based, you know? I don't know, for some reasons. And people expect, you know, some kind of results, you know, from something they clearly cut from people who kind of, are thinkers already. So, so anyway, so um, my feeling was that it was very interesting to kind of now meet this community of thinkers. But what I wish is that uh, uh, that community and African filmmakers should actually be working together somehow because it's the same issues. Uh, and I say one last thing. Can you imagine that most of the ideas here that was that are in this film, no government is implementing them, zero. Like, look at any government, all these, I mean, great ideas, there's not one African government that is implementing these ideas. Mm -hmm. And these people have been doing this for ages. This is not like the first time they're talking. It was just like they gathered together here in Dakar. No international organization, the EU, the, uh, the African Union, uh, the United Nations, none of them is implementing these ideas. So I was very shocked. Even to organize this conference, Felwin had to struggle, no money. Like nobody's interested in this. Just this is the reality. So anyway. Mm -hmm. Could you please tell us uh, how long is the second part and what are the main topics? Just that we have a, a window understanding what is the second part okay it's an hour and 30 minutes also uh, the main topics economics is one of the main topics actually i don't know because a lot of people are talking about the francs cfa the cfa francs uh there's this 
economist, Senegalese also, Ndongo Samba Sila. And uh, that's one of my favorite parts, because he's talking about the whole project, the economical project, I think uh, it, that is about uh, I don't know. You to create growth. Growth, yeah. And then uh, what else? Uh, employment, croissance. Is that, there's an equation between uh, how do you create growth, how employment, and all this. And he says, for Africa, forget it. But that's what every government is implementing, not just in Africa. So he's actually showing how it's all wrong. Uh, and I gave a very nice example. He said, you really, okay, because there are a few things, technology keeps growing. Um, he, gave, he gave the example of China, India, but even with that growth didn't create that much employment. So, it's, so he says for Africa, we are following, we are pursuing some economic politics, uh, policies that will produce nothing. Uh, because if you really want to create employment in Africa to make a road, give them a spoon, like each one with a spoon. Obviously, you have a lot of jobs, you know, <laughs> but clearly, you know that what you're doing, you know, is not really uh, productive. So he was challenged by Celeste Monga, who's working for the, used to work for the World Bank, now he's working for the, um, uh, the, the African Bank, but, and uh, it was very nice, that kind of, discussion, but it was very clear that Ndongo, Ndongo Sambasila was right. So that's just one of the discussion that happened there. One last question. I, ha I have just a very short question. You paralleled your wonderful film with uh, wedding films and Batman movies, I, which I liked really very much. And I just wanted to know if um, the atmosphere of debate, because it was uh, thinking together, but I, I'm, I'm sure there were, had been some debates, but we don't see anything of struggling and contradicting and something. Wasn't it, uh, wasn't it there? Was it absent or di did you just choose to keep it apart? So you think I censored the whole thing? <laughs> no. When you are the editor, you are in uh, power. We, not really, because you, I don't know, you see this battle they're having, a, I mean, not battle, when he's, talking, he's saying that how come 50 years after independence, we're coming to celebrate, the African thinkers come to the French Institute, you know, to, yeah. So, yes, but obviously uh, they were all hurt by that comment. Uh, and I could see actually a shield struggling to kind of answer that question. And we, when I was editing, I showed it to Felwin, and he was like, okay. Uh, even if he wouldn't have done it, he wouldn't have put it himself. But I was like, no, that would be censorship, so just keep it. Actually, Monga didn't say, didn't have a very good presentation there. That's why he's not even part of it much. Uh, he, uh, uh, but that one was important like to keep it. No, I don't think so. I think um, oh, because obviously the second edition, I was there and then we were in the same hotel, a very small hotel in Dakar. We were having breakfast in a very small room every morning. So um, no, there were discussions, you know, um, but uh, uh, everyone had to present his argument and then there were questions. Okay, now the person who made a presentation had to kind of defend his kind of paper. Um, uh, but uh, I, I don't think, uh, obviously, I don't know how he cast them because I, didn't, I don't know how he, he chose them, why. Or, but I didn't, I didn't think the, the disagreement were very big. Uh, but I think also they learn from each other. What you see is that uh, one person brings an idea and then the other one kind of... So Felwin rewrote his paper, I think, six or seven times. Mm -hmm. Because it was they, they did a off a kind of a off session with no public, and then with the public. So they were kind of learning from each other, and that's maybe why you have that feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, any very last comment from anyone? Otherwise, we would like to close the session for now. Um, and the next film, Miraculous Weapons, is starting at <laughs> half past eight. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jean-Pierre.